Up until this point, every bit of labor we have done has been done by hand. While a practiced hand can quickly smith metal plates, a rich player can consume hammers to smash minerals quickly, and a patient player can grind sufficient amounts of grains to make bread as a staple, there are better things to be dedicating our time and energy to. With the addition of mechanical power, we can automate these tasks and take advantage of the wind as a source of free energy. Additionally, the task of pulverizing hard stones and gems, an absolute essential of steel production, must be done using mechanical power. To help you understand the windmill and mechanical power, I've broken this tutorial down into five segments from the basics of construction to the advanced. Part 1. Materials the construction of a windmill requires a large amount of somewhat difficult to acquire materials. Animal fat, which is only acquirable from slaying animals of good weight in the summer and early fall. Some players eat this in an emergency, but it's a waste to do so. It's much better to stockpile for building machinery. The absolute bare minimum needed to make a functional windmill is three but I recommend having at least 10 to make a good amount of parts. Next is resin, which, while renewable, can only be obtained every seven in-game days, which is almost six real-life hours. Resin only spawns from leaking logs, which generate randomly on natural pine and acacia trees. Player-grown trees will never produce it, and so in order to acquire good quantities, you will need to maintain a series of markers on harvestable tree locations, and ensure that you do not accidentally cut any down. This is another one best stockpiled over time. If you see resin, collect it and mark it on your map. Always. Finally, we will need a large quantity of flax. My little farm here is cute, but it's simply way too small to provide the amount of cloth we need to make the windmill sails. A set of sails takes four linen cloth, which is a whopping 64 flax fibers. To make a good, powerful windmill, it's essential you go out and gather as many flaxseed as possible and dedicate an entire farm to growing it. The plants also drop grain, which can be made into flour or fed to animals, so it's a good crop overall. Additional supplies that are easier to acquire are a good amount of logs, as most recipes will require them, and the chisel, which is a tool you must smith on the anvil. Part 2. Construction Did you know that you can move windows around? The recipes for mechanical parts can be a little complex and hard to remember. I prefer to move the guidebook and inventory around so that they're both visible at the same time. The absolute bare minimum needed to make a functional windmill is a windmill rotor, an axle, and a set of angled gears. Windmill rotors can float in the air, but they require a block to be placed on. I recommend placing a block, placing the rotor, and then breaking that block so that there's clearance for the sails. Sails must be placed in sets of four. You cannot place just one sail, or three, or any number other than four. Sails require two blocks of clearance per set. You can build blocks that clip into them, but they will pop off. You can place up to 20 sails, or five sets, on a single rotor. More sails means more speed, and more importantly, more power. For grinding, a single set can slowly work a kern in strong winds, but for working a helve hammer, three is the realistic minimum. Now that the windmill is spinning, you have power, but you need to transfer it. By default, the windmill produces power horizontally, which isn't very useful to us since the windmill is probably up much higher than our machinery. The angled gear allows us to transfer the power along the vertical axis down to us. This is the basic windmill, which you can use to power any machine assuming you have enough wind and sails. There is, of course, much more to learn. Part 3. Wind. Wind speed varies greatly. 
It can range from a fierce storm that spins the windmill at insane speeds, or dead still. There is no way to control this. The higher a windmill is, however, the more power it can extract from the wind, with some rules. For every one block above Y level 120, which is 10 blocks above sea level, the windmill gains an additional 1% power. The maximum benefit that a windmill can receive is an additional 50% power. So, a windmill at a height of 170 can have as much as 150% power. Wind power below sea level conversely drops rapidly. According to the wiki, at Y level 106, the power drops by 50%. At 8 blocks, it drops by 66%, and onwards until eventually stopping to zero. Part 4. Speed and Torque Realistically speaking, torque, the amount of raw power to defeat the resistance of machinery, is the most useful thing to a player. Speed matters very little if a windmill will instantly grind to a halt when attached to a machine. Because of this, a wealthier or more dedicated player may wish to utilize gearing to reduce speed in favor of more torque, providing them with more reliable, consistent work. The angled gear has 8 teeth, while the large wheel has 48. I won't use any math, but the principles of gearing therefore allow us to convert the small gear's speed into torque by having it drive the much larger wheel slower. For each time a small wheel speed is used to drive a large wheel, the power is multiplied six times and the speed is reduced by the same amount. While it would be silly, it is possible to get a single tiny windmill to power a huge amount of machinery extremely slowly. Conversely, with a robust set of sails, you may wish to convert a slow wind speed with lots of power into a greater amount of speed capable of doing a small amount of work very quickly. This can be achieved by reversing the gearing and having large wheels drive small ones. Keep in mind, however, the power loss is substantial and it would likely take a rather absurd amount of power input to truly achieve blistering speeds. Part 5. Chutes and Hoppers Vintage Story also offers a variety of simple machines that can be used to automatically move and deposit items. The hopper will take any item thrown into its top and deposit it into the block below, be it a chest or a chute. The chutes, both straight and elbow, will transfer any items fed into them by either a chest or a hopper down to the block below and the Archimedes screw, which, when powered, will move any items fed into them upwards. Here is a rudimentary automatic kern. A kern can produce twice as much flour as it can hold. When a kern is full, it will attempt to spit its produce out in a random direction. By blocking all but one exit, we can collect the excess. Since kerns can be powered from below, we can add a chest and a chute to feed it an entire inventory of grain. And because a kern simply fails to produce flour if its randomly chosen direction to spit is blocked, we can hook up four hoppers to collect four times faster. Though this is quite an absurd setup and very expensive. Now that we've acquired the ability to harness the natural energy of the environment and put it to work, we can finally take on more daunting tasks such as the production of iron, which will be my next video.